Chapter 23 Cameron Boxer When was it ever better than this? The positive action group was history, so I had my life back. Mom and Dad still gave me credit for creating it, though. And sympathy, too, because I'd been wronged and my greatest achievement had been taken away from me. Even Melody was cutting me some slack. It was pretty ill. Better still, I didn't have to worry about Jennifer and Tony anymore. The friends of Fuzzy were back in business, and they were getting things all their own way. But, since I was too, it didn't bother me that they didn't really deserve it. I'd seen the Dodge Charger a couple of times, but now it just drove right by me. One time, I could have sworn I got a friendly wave from Tony behind the tinted window. I'd never realized just how nervous that car had made me. Now, it was like when I was five, and the family with the big, mean dog moved away. Illest of all, though, I was back on the couch in the spot perfectly formed for my butt, practicing for rule the world. Gone were the days of stealing ten minutes here, fifteen minutes there, because the PAG was taking up all my time. I was in the lead chariot, racing around the Circus Maximus, well ahead of the pack when my wingman, Gaius Magnus, let go of the reins and coasted to a stop. Chuck, what are you doing? I howled, watching his avatar being trampled into the dirt by every other team in the race. This is boring, he told me over the headset. I don't want to play anymore. What do you mean, boring? I demanded. We love this game. A tone indicated that Chuck had logged out. What's with him, I complained to Pavel after the race was over. Pavel sounded exasperated over the network. You've got tunnel vision about your so-called lifestyle, he accused. You never think about other people and what makes them tick. That's kind of harsh, I complained. Chuck loved the PAG, and he's really bummed about it. The PAG, I echoed. What does a PAG have to do with video games? Nothing, he replied readily. There were no chariots, or space aliens, or titans. But when we helped somebody, that person's life was better, even if it was only in a tiny way. And it was in reality, not on any screen. So when Chuck said the game was boring, he technically didn't mean it was a bad game. He just meant it didn't measure up to the stuff we did with the PAG. And you know what? I think I agree with him. I couldn't have been more shocked if he'd told me that he was a space alien about to blast me into Dimension X. It had always been Pavel, Chuck, and me, as long as I could remember, the awesome threesome. All at once, I felt like I didn't know these guys anymore. What about rule the world, I asked. It'll be fun. I hope you pick me to be your partner. But, to be honest, it doesn't seem that important anymore. Well, I must have gasped, because he added, it's not like we're going to win or anything. If Evil McKill people can beat us so easily, there must be plenty of others who can too. I'll bet there are gamers who are better than him. So, I wasn't free of the PAG after all. It was haunting me from beyond the grave. I abandoned the Circus Maximus early, even offering it to Melody. She peered at the screen. Have you figured out the hack where you have a centurion ride beside you? It helps fight off the barbarians in the home stretch. What do you know about it? I said sulkily. Katrina and I have been playing a lot lately, now that the PAG's gone. We kind of miss it, you know? I ran upstairs. The PAG haunted me at school, too. String stopped me in the hall to tell me his academic probation was over, and he was back on the Seahawks. He reached out his long arms and enfolded me in a bear hug. The string owes you, Cam. No PAG, no extra credit, no football. Pagers forever. He wasn't the only one. All day long, people kept coming up to me with emotional stories about what the positive action group meant to them. I never had any friends until the PAG. We saved that old lady's life. Helping people made me feel so good. I met my girlfriend on the day we built the Beaver Lodge. The only time I didn't fight with my brother was when we were on a crew together. The friends of Fuzzy are the bad guys, not us. It's no fair that they broke us up. Daphne was especially bitter because Elvis had not been seen since the incident at the Y. Those high school criminals did this. Elvis would be in his habitat if it weren't for them. Or maybe he'd still be at the Y, I suggested. 
It could have been the fight that scared him out. What difference does that make, she lamented. He's gone now, and we don't even have the PAG to help find him and get him back. Beaver finding had never been the PAG's job, as I remembered it. But that was happening with everybody. Now that the club was gone, they were remembering it wrong, like we'd done everything short of curing the common cold. In the cafeteria, I found Jordan and his election opponent, Kelly, having lunch together. The vote's off, Jordan told me cheerfully. Kelly and I have decided to share the top job and be co-presidents with Jordana serving as treasurer. And we owe it all to you, Cam, Kelly added. To me? We were wasting so much energy tearing each other down, Jordan confessed. But in the PAG, you showed us the power of cooperation. Kelly looked anxious. Do you think they'll let us restart the club once we're in office? I don't know, I told them. Mr. Fanfare seemed pretty definite that we were shut down. I think it came straight from the principal. It was like that non-stop. Ex-pagers pulling me aside to reminisce about the good old days and to complain that we got busted up when the Friends of Fuzzy were still going strong. Some even wanted to know what kind of revenge I was plotting. One thing that was common to everyone, they wanted to know how I was handling this terrible disaster. After all, the Positive Action Group was my baby. What could I tell them? That I felt great? Like someone had lifted a thousand pound weight off my back? That for the first time since the PAG stuff started, I was free? That it was all I could do to stop myself from dropping to my knees and thanking the heavens above for releasing me from this monster I'd created? So I said, I'm hanging in there. Everyone accepted that. I was on my way to last period when the door of the supply closet next to my health class opened. An arm reached out, clamped around my neck in a semi-chokehold, and hauled me inside. The door slammed behind me. I struggled to get away, and when the hold finally relaxed, I wheeled. I was expecting to see Tony and Jennifer there to tie me up and leave me in here, or stuff me in a locker, or chop me into fish bait and dump me in the ocean. You never knew with those two. Instead, I found myself looking up into the huge features of Xavier Majette. An icy chill ran up and down my spine, radiating outward to frost my entire body. We were used to Xavier now, but he was still the scariest kid in the school. The PAG was his court-ordered community service. What if, now that we were shut down, he had to go back to juvie? And what if he was blaming me for that? Been looking for you all day, he rumbled, glaring down at me with burning eyes. Oh yeah? My voice sounded squeaky, an octave higher than normal. I've got something for you. Here it comes, I thought in agony. A punch in the face, a broken arm, a ruptured spleen. He pressed something into my hands. When I dared to look down, I found myself holding a roundish, toilet paper wrapped object, a little bigger than a softball. There was something solid and heavy inside. Open it up, he urged. I don't know what I expected to find in there. A bomb, a shrunken head. My hands were shaking as I tore through the wrapping. It was a ceramic dish decorated with a pattern of cactus plants. A bowl, I croaked. Not any bowl, he corrected me. A salsa bowl. But you can also use it for guacamole or con queso dip. I guess I seemed totally clueless, so he added, I made it in art class. Really? I was impressed. The shape was even, and the cacti were really well painted. It looked like something professional from a store. I glanced at his hands. They were the size of, like, hams. I couldn't imagine his sausage fingers creating something as nice as this. It's really good, but why are you giving it to me? His eyes blazed into mine. I never finished anything before, not until the PAG. In the PAG, we finished everything we started. And when we were done, stuff was different. Not just different, better. If it worked with the PAG, it could work other places too. So, this is yours. I really like it, I said, and meant it. A salsa bowl was a useful accessory for a gamer. I could already picture it on the table next to my couch in the basement. What were the odds that the least likely person in Sycamore would give me the perfect gift for my lifestyle. Hey, Xavier, 
You're not in trouble, are you? You know, because the PAG was your community service, and now... My voice trailed off. To my amazement, a gigantic tear bubbled out of his left eye and trailed down his massive cheek. I could barely manage the words. They're not making you go back to, you know, back there? He wiped his face. Nah, they cleaned my slate. So why? He shook his big head. I can't explain it. When we had the PAG, I woke up in the morning, and the day was about something. I had something to do, and it was important. Now, it's like I'm just killing time. Do you play video games? I suggested timidly. He looked at me like I was from another planet. Not the same, he said sadly. I don't know if anything can ever be the same again.